All right, good morning, Hill family. This morning begins what we're calling our six days of prayer in this holy week leading up uh, to the Resurrection Sunday. Um, during this most important week, we want to be reflecting and praying together uh, as a body concerning what we're going to say the benefits of the resurrection are. We're going to list a few as we pray each day and let that lead our, and guide our thoughts. Um, each day, a devotional video like this uh, will be posted by a member of the Hill um, to guide us as a body uh, throughout this week. So I want to encourage you to, to join in uh, each day, to follow along each day, and to think and to pray together as the Hill Church about the truths, the benefits of the resurrection as we lead up to Easter Sunday. Um, and we want to start uh, this morning by considering how the resurrection grounds the truth of our faith, how the resurrection grounds the truth of our faith. Like uh, today, uh, the early church contained many skeptics concerning the truth of the resurrection from the dead. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, deals with uh, this skepticism in his first letter to the church at Corinth. Particularly in chapter 15, Paul, he writes to prove and persuade uh, the church regarding the reality, the necessity, the truth of the bodily resurrection of Jesus and how that relates to our faith. And in that chapter, he dealt with the, he, he, in that chapter, he does a lot. He deals with the evidence of the resurrection, the importance of the resurrection, the order of the resurrection, the value of the resurrection, and even as he ends it there with the, our proper responses to the resurrection. But right in the middle, he, he makes this great clarifying uh, statement in verse 17. He says this. He says, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So as Christians, we believe uh, that upon death, we will spend eternity with God. We will be uh, raised to new life in Christ. Uh, we will enter into our glorious inheritance. And this we believe because Jesus has dealt with our sin on the cross. Christ died as our substitute. He took the punishment we deserve for our sin. And as a result, we, as Christians, we know we have been forgiven, redeemed, and set free from the penalty and eventually from the power of sin. But here's the truth, beloved, about the resurrection. All of this would simply be wishful thinking if Christ did not get up from the grave. If the bodily resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, then judgment and condemnation still awaits each one of us for our sin. Paul made clear back in verse 3 of chapter 15 that Christ died, he says, for our sins. But if God had not vindicated Jesus by raising him from the dead, there would be no reason to believe that our sin has in fact been dealt with. In that sense, our faith would be futile because the one whom our faith rests upon would still be dead. But church, we are celebrating this, re not, this week not only that Christ died, but that Christ did in fact raise from the grave. The tomb is empty and the throne is occupied. Our faith is securely grounded, not in our religious efforts, not in our strength, but in the resurrected power of Jesus. He died for sin, and He rose as a demonstration of His power over sin and death. Therefore, as, as Paul makes in his argument here, our faith is in fact secure. It is not futile. So as we pray this morning, I want you to look back over this chapter. I want you to reflect upon the truth of the resurrection and the security that it offers us every day in our faith. And we're going to pray together this, this morning with confidence because our faith is not futile, because our faith does not rest upon us. It rests upon the resurrected Jesus who rose from the grave and is securely seated and reigns over this world. So I love you, church, and I'm excited to pray with you beginning this morning to start the rest of our week.